didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. The sin was great, your love was greater.
Good morning, welcome to Village. My name is Charlotte Bryan and I'm on staff here. Today as our DNA groups fair, stop by the lobby and the Columbia rooms after service today to chat with DNA group ministry leaders, ask questions and find the perfect small group for you. Most DNA groups will start meeting again this month through spring. The Village Cafe is returning to its normal hours of operation. After tomorrow, Labor Day, you can join us for a cup of coffee Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Next Sunday is our big fall kickoff. New service times begin next week, September 10. We look forward to worshiping with you either in the chapel at 8.15 a.m. or in the sanctuary at 10.30. Between both of these services, we have a weekly prayer group gathering Join us for a transformative intercessory prayer in the Deschutes room. That's just off the lobby. And after the 1030 service, stay and have lunch with us. Our annual all church fall kickoff lunch features food prepared by various ministries and villagers, also pinatas, info booths, and so much more. You won't wanna miss it. Please do pick up your kids or your youth first, then join us in the upper parking lot for a fun afternoon. Well, we have much to look forward to in today's service. We'll hear more about our fall discipleship opportunities and next week's new chapel service, and we'll take communion together. If you're joining via the live stream, please prepare your own bread and juice. And pastors Mauricio and Aleda Rivas will start our new sermon series today, Prayer for Freedom. But first, let's begin with worship. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to give an announcement for everyone who uses our translation audio fetch app today. You will log on to the app like normal, but you want to make sure that the Wi-Fi you are on is VBC. And it does require a password. So please just go out to the tables where our wonderful translation team volunteers are. And they will put the password into your phone or your device. So again, you want to be on the Wi-Fi that is VBC. And then just as an experiment, for any of you who do not need to be on Wi-Fi during the service, if you can actually shut that off on your phone, that may actually help us this morning as well. And for everyone watching at home, you don't have to worry about this. Good morning. Hello, church. It is so good to be together. This week 
today we start a new series on the Lord's Prayer. And as I was preparing for today, I was thinking a lot, as I usually do. Um, but we had a really, really special time to pray over our youth um, on Wednesday with our mentors. And during that time, we prayed over specific prayer requests. Um, and I had one that was very, very interesting. <laughs> and you'll get to hear why. Um, but as I was thinking about today, and as I was thinking about the Lord's Prayer, that prayer really, really resonated with me. And so I thought I should share it with you. So if you um, could listen closely, I'll read through this prayer. And then uh, we'll continue. Um, it says, for our, for our world, I pray and the environment that we live in, for our coral reefs dying and nature being abused. I pray for our society that's changing in bad ways and people turning away from God, not knowing what's good or bad. Divorce, abuse, hurt, burdens, mental health, physical health, for pain. I pray for people without parents or family members, not having anyone to turn to, bullying, finding fun in other people's hurt or pain, for broken hearts, wildfires, high expectations, school, homeless people, climate change, world hunger and not being able to retrieve basic needs, alcohol addiction, misuse of drugs, and relying on things other than God. What is happening to our world? Ah, heavy. <laughs> this was a prayer from one of our youth. <laughs> and I got to pray over this. Um, man. It's heavy. Um, I don't know where your heart is at this morning. I don't know what's been weighing on you this week. What has been weighing on your soul. I don't know what your prayer is. But I want to invite you to take a moment and think about what's on your heart. What is your prayer this morning? What moved me most about this prayer is that it was so heavy. <laughs> and as I was thinking about the Lord's Prayer, I was like, that is it right there. The prayer is heavy. Our prayers are heavy. The world, the things that we see around, it's heavy. It's so much more than we can bear. So when Jesus teaches us to pray, my God, is that not the most beautiful prayer of reliance and trust, true faith in God. When you read that prayer, and you know we, we say it a lot, we repeat it a lot, and we get used to it. Don't get used to the word of the Lord. Doesn't matter how many times we hear it in sermons, doesn't matter how many times we hear it in devotionals, the word of God is divine and it is powerful. There is a reason it's ageless, timeless, and able to break through anything and everything. There is power in it. So our Father in heaven, our Father in heaven who is near us, hear our prayer. Keep us safe. You, Lord, be the one to lead us. You be the one to keep us safe because we need you. It is a prayer of like, ah, I admit it, you are my God. And I want nothing else but to be close to you and to be led by you, my shepherd. So when I read that prayer so heavy, I was like, amen. Because as we pray and as we go through this series, we get to devote ourselves and surrender ourselves completely again before God. This prayer I hold, this burden I hold is not mine, Lord, but yours. So help us get through this. So help us to pray. Will you stand with us? We're going to learn a really beautiful song this morning that's going to help us, that's going to lead us through the Lord's Prayer. And as we sing this together, pray your prayer. Pray what's on your heart and what's on your soul. And, and take joy in knowing that that's why we have God. We have a powerful God. So we don't have to be weighed down by all the things. Amen. 
So we're going to sing this through, and then we'll invite you to sing with us the second time we sing through the verse, and the same with the chorus. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in our hearts. Sing with us. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven. says, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us as we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom Come sing that with us. Say, Father, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in our hearts. Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Deliver us 
So my name is Ryan Volker. I've been coming here to Village for uh, I think actually about four years. Um, I've told the story in the Alpha group, but I remember uh, we were coming up to Easter and my daughter was in school, I think it was preschool, and um, and she asked like, who's Jesus? And and um, I went to answer the question with just kind of a basic, you know, generic response. And I stopped and I said, you know what? Let's go to church and let's find out. What I appreciate about Alpha was that I was in a space where I could more openly talk about my journey with God, my questions with God. And it feels like just a wave, a slow building wave for me. Um, thinking back to, I, you know, when I was a kid and, you know, always feeling that there was a God, um, but not really exploring, you know, the faith more specifically like I have here at Village. Um, but it's just that wave just keeps building and it definitely is a journey for me. I mean, it's a walk. It uh, hasn't been something that's just been instantaneous, you know, that I think has been for some people. Um, but it's something I, it's in me now. I, Alpha seems to meet you where you're at, which it met me where I was at. There was, you know, we were, our particular cohort or group was, I think in the, um, relatively close to the same page of where we're, um, we have faith, you know, we're not, just kind of dropped into this completely. The questions that we run through, you know, what we address, um, or what the, um, you know, the curriculum addresses, um, everything you could think of from just, you know, developing your faith, the questions, and that it's healthy to have questions, to have, um, to have doubt, you know, faith and doubt. I used to think that they were this is just kind of one or the other, but, um, you know, they can kind of go hand in hand, you know. It's just, it's all coming natural. That wave just, again, just keeps kind of growing. Good morning, Village. I invite you to join our fall class practicing the King's economy. The Church in the West is rediscovering the fact that God cares deeply for the poor. More and more Christians are looking for ways to practice economic discipleship. But it's hard to make progress when we're blind to our own entanglements uh, with idolatrous economic beliefs and practices. Through practicing the king's economy, you'll discover practical ways to live out kingdom economics in your daily life, at home, work, and even at church, to truly put your faith into action and grow rich spiritually. This seven-week class will include live teaching, videos, and small group discussions. We'll meet Tuesday nights starting September 12th through October 24th, 7 p.m. to 8.15 in Columbia A. Reframe course gives me a foundation to reframe my thinking and see God's miracle in my ordinary life. I don't have to separate spiritual activities on Sunday from the secular activities on the other six days helped me to be intentional and mindful in my day-to-day -day life, to insert God's overarching story into my life at, at work, home, and public spaces, and in all my relationships and encounters. God is not only exists in my life on Sundays, but also He watch over me uh, during the, the other six days. So this is revelation and a new way of looking at the life. So come and join the Reframe course next round. I'm sure you will be amazed and blessed. It was indeed Pastor James and my privilege and joy to co-facilitate the Reframe course last spring. How is your faith in Christ impacting your daily life and activities? How does it translate to your life goals, career, daily routines and meaning? of life. Reframe is an official discipleship training course for all covenantal members of Village Church and it is my prayer that every single one of our covenantal members take this course through which we are making ourselves available to the Lord for His shaping and renewal of our lives through seasons of life. So please take advantage of this opportunity. And besides these courses, there are many other classes and opportunities this semester for you to grow and be shaped as authentic followers of Christ. Baptism class for those who commit to be baptized as your confession of faith. 
Bible Study Fellowship, ESF, for those who want to know more about the life of Jesus in John's Gospel. Community Basics for anyone who considers becoming a covenantal member of our community. Koinonia for our seniors who experience the depth of God's Word in community. Reaching Higher, a woman's Bible study on the life of Abraham. And Who Am I? A workshop, which is indeed a powerful experience for you to reflect, or should I say, reinterpret your life, past, present, and future through the lens of Jesus' heart and village celebration of cultures for all of us to appreciate and cherish the beauty of God embedded in the diverse expressions of culture. And of course, our fellowship-based Bible studies are year-round in Chinese, Spanish, Japanese, and Korean, ranging from Bible study courses to one-on-one -on -one discipleship trainings. And through all this, the goal is clear, how to love and how to follow Christ as authentic, genuine, and integrous disciples. It's a lifelong journey needing wisdom and trigger at every corner. So for more information and registration, please use this QR code or visit the information booth in the lobby today. May you follow Jesus all the days of your life. Today is quite a historic day uh, because this is our last day of gathering for the Sunday services at 10 o'clock in the morning. From next week, we'll have two Sunday morning services, one at 8.15 in the chapel and the other at 10.30 a.m. here in the sanctuary. All our kids and youth services will be available at 10.30 a.m. only so that they all could continue to gather together in one space and time. Many of you remember, we used to have multiple services on a weekend, 9 o'clock and 11 a.m. pre-pandemic. And a little further while ago, there used to be two services or four services simultaneously happening in the chapel and in the sanctuary, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Saturday evening services uh, for over a decade. For a little while, there used to be Sunday 5 p.m. service in the chapel. Hispanic Fellowship used to have a separate Spanish service in the chapel. It started at 7 p.m. Then, over the 17 years of time, it became 5 p.m., 4 p.m., 2 p.m., 11 a.m., and 10 a.m. in a separate space, and then we are now combined. And exactly two years ago, September 2021, we merged with a local Japanese church, Simple Truth, which is now Japanese Fellowship at Village Church. God has done some amazing things in us over the past years. Coming back from the pandemic, we intentionally, we intentionally did our best to keep one Sunday morning service as long as possible. And the reason was clear. It was our endeavor to remind ourselves that we are a community together in Christ. Instead of saying, hello, how are you? How long have you been at Village? Which service do you go to? Wow, you've been here for long and it's our first time meeting. You know how split we were, like inevitably and structurally, because of different service times and spaces. 
We wanted everyone to be able to be in one space as long as possible so that we could indeed come closer to the idea and calling of being a community in Christ together where your faces are known, your names are known, and your stories are told. That's why we've been sharing the story times on the videos community in Christ where your faces are known, your presence is recognized, your names known, your stories told. Loving and being loved, knowing and being known, following Jesus together as a multicultural community in Christ. In a world where there are so many classifications and groupings of people according to our skin colors, ethnic backgrounds, socioeconomic differences, language, age, generations, preferences, and so forth, we want to be an alternative imagination and reality of how we are supposed to live and relate in light of the kingdom gospel, the kingdom value, and the kingdom vocation a missional, multicultural community in Christ. So coming out from the pandemic to an in-person Sunday morning service, we deliberately chose 10 o'clock for our Sunday service time, and it was a symbolic choice. It's a midway between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., our service times pre-pandemic. Every one of us needed to step forward closer towards others, in order to be united. And I praise God today for all He has done in us and through us over the past years in bringing us together and closer as a community. Yes, of course, there are far more ways to go, but I don't want to neglect the progress that God has made in us through those years. And we are about to start two Sunday services from next week, The goal is not to split our community into two, but to invite and to introduce more people to Christ and to our Christ-centered community. I'm specifically referring to the ones who are unchurched. Chapel service is our endeavor to create a space, a hospitable space, where you will be able to invite your beloved ones who need to and want to know Jesus. Without your support, without your prayer, without your zeal, I don't know if the service will need to last long. You know, most Christians agree that Christians need to share the gospel with others. But only a few of us truly believe in it, it seems. Only a few of us live the belief. When is the last time you shared the gospel with a non-believer? When is the last time you sincerely prayed for an unbelieving person to come to Christ? When is the last time a person came to Christ because of your relationship, because of your prayer, because of your love, because of your persistent conversation, and because of your actions? I don't intend to arouse a sense of guilt But I want to remind us what our Christian faith and life is really about. We are called to love. And we share the gospel because we love. People are not our targets of persuasion. We share, we invite, because and only because we love the specific person. Compelled by the love of Jesus, we love the triune God and love our neighbors and families. Would you be willing to pray, therefore, and introduce your beloved ones, family, friends, relatives, neighbors, and the ones you love, introduce them to Jesus? If the person doesn't respond and doesn't want to come, I still invite you to come to the chapel service if you're really desperate and sit there on behalf of the person you're praying for. Sit there trusting that someday he or she will be sitting next to you worshiping Jesus. Perhaps tell them that you are praying for them during the chapel service and that you will be attending the service anyways, thinking of them, waiting for them. I'm not talking about coercion or threatening anyone. I'm talking about your desperate love for the ones you love 
and their disconnection with Jesus. You're concerned for that. In a broken world where hatred and sufferings prevail, such a, just like Pastor Monica uh, prayed in the beginning of this service, in a world where fake gods, counterfeit gods prevail, do you really believe that Jesus Christ is the solid foundation, redeemer, and the eternal hope for life? Isn't that the good news to be shared? You just heard about the fall classes and discipleship opportunities. And what's the point of learning? To be more knowledgeable? To amuse the knowledges? We learn to share. We earn to share. We grow in order to nurture and love others more effectively and wisely. We learn to be equipped. Equipped to be what? Equipped to serve. Equipped to minister to the ones in need. That's why we learn and that's what Christian life is about. So with that, how about we spend a few moments right now praying on your own for the ones you love. If Jesus is truly the greatest gift, don't you want to share the person of Jesus with the ones you love? Would you also pray that our chapel service will be a space, a hospitable space where new lives are birthed? Let's spend a few moments praying on our own. Lord Jesus, you are the greatest gift you've ever given to us. So help us to know you more and enable us to share that with the ones around us. Let our chapel service be a space where broken lives are healed and lives transformed for your name's glory. And I also pray for all the offerings that we bring to you this morning to live out the kingdom economics. Use them for your glory and to bring people to yourself. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. With that, shall we now all stand and greet one another as we are meeting as one community this morning.
Father in heaven. 天にいます私たちの父。Father nuestro que estás en los cielos. e b e n a l a d i f i c e m u e l 我们在天上的父。Hanere g i s h i n u r i a o c h i p a i nos que estás en los cielos. Hallowed be your name. Santificado sea tu nombre. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. As we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. Muy buenos días. How are you this morning? Thank you so much. Este día tengo el privilegio que Patty va a ser mi traductora. Mi esposa no está con nosotros en esta mañana. Good morning. So sorry, I started chatting with the、um, coffee people. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so today, my name is Patty. Pastora Leida is not here today, so、um, I will do my best to fill in. You will, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Bienvenidos. Yo soy Mauricio Rivas. Welcome. I am Mauricio Rivas. Uno de los pastores aquí en nuestra amada iglesia. One of the pastors here in our beloved church. En esta oportunidad damos inicio a una serie de sermones basado en la oración de lo que es el Padre Nuestro. Today we begin our sermon series based on the Lord's Prayer. Esta oración para muchos es llamada la oración sacerdotal del Nuevo Testamento. For many, this prayer is called the priestly prayer of the New Testament. Es mi deseo que podamos ser edificados. It is my desire that we may be edified. Y que podamos mantener una cultura permanente de oración de una forma personal y de una forma colectiva. And that we may maintain an unwavering culture of prayer, personally and collectively. Así que por seis semanas. Estaremos predicando acerca de lo que es la oración. So for six weeks we will be preaching on this prayer. Me gustaría que oremos. I would like us to pray. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos. Our Father in heaven. En este día te damos gracias y on, santificado sea tu nombre. On this day we give you thanks. Hallowed be your name. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad como en el cielo. Así también en la tierra. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Querido Señor, gracias por el pan nuestro de cada día. Dear Lord, thank you for our daily bread. Gracias porque en ti siempre encontramos perdón a nuestras ofensas. Thank you because in you we always find forgiveness for our sins. Gracias porque hoy en ti podemos perdonar a toda persona. Thank you because Today in you we can forgive all persons. Tú es el reino, el poder, la gloria por todos los siglos. Amén. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. La oración, Iglesia, es algo común desde la creación del hombre. Prayer, Church, is something very common since the creation of man. La oración no es un sacrificio. Ni una forma de obtener algo de Dios por medio de mis obras. Prayer is not a sacrifice, nor a way to obtain something from God by works. La oración en realidad muestra nuestra dependencia de un do, Dios trascendente y poderoso que todo lo ve y todo lo escucha. In reality, prayer shows, shows our dependence on God, who is transcendent, powerful, all-seeing, and all-hearing. Esta porción del Padre Nuestro aparece en Mateo y es paralelo con el Evangelio de Lucas. 
This particular portion of the Lord's Prayer that appears in Matthew is parallel to the Gospel of Luke. Con la única diferencia que Lucas menciona que fueron sus discípulos los que le piden al Señor que les enseñe a orar. With the only difference that Luke mentions that it was his disciples who asked the Lord to teach them to pray. Así como Juan el Bautista lo había hecho con sus discípulos. Just as John the Baptist had done with his disciples. Debemos recordar que algunos de los discípulos del Señor Jesús we must remember that some of the disciples of the Lord Jesus anteriormente habían sido discípulos de Juan el Bautista had previously been disciples of John the Baptist. Y para los judíos era común el orar y el enseñar a sus hijos en cómo hacerlo. For the Jews, it was common to pray and to teach, and to teach their children how to pray. Entonces, ¿por qué piden que les enseñe a ellos a orar? Then why do they ask him, teach us how to pray? Era costumbre que los rabinos enseñaban a sus discípulos una oración sencilla para uso frecuente. It was customary for the rabbis to teach their disciples a simple prayer for frequent use. La oración que Jesús les enseña es un modelo de cómo orar. The prayer that Jesus teaches them is a model of how to pray. Debemos recordar que esta fue la petición de los discípulos, enséñanos a orar. We must remember that this was the request of the disciples, teach us. Esto nos dice que la oración no es algo que sale natural del ser humano. This tells us that prayer is not something that comes naturally to human beings. Sino que es algo que debemos aprender especialmente ahora como hijos de Dios. But that is something that must be learned, especially now as children of God. He tenido el privilegio de compartir el evangelio con muchas personas. I have had the privilege of sharing the gospel with many people. Y siempre que alguien viene al Señor, me llena de mucho gozo y al final siempre oro por ellos. And always when someone comes to the Lord, it fills me with great joy. And at the end, I always pray for them. Y, y luego les guío a repetir la oración de arrepentimiento que enseña el libro de Romanos en el capítulo 10, verso 9. And then lead them to repeat the prayer of repentance taught in, in the Bible in Romans 10, 9. Que si confesares con tu boca que Jesús es el Señor y creyeres en tu corazón que Dios levantó a los muertos, serás salvo. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Porque con el corazón se cree para justicia, pero con la boca se confiesa Para salvación. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Recientemente llegamos del viaje misionero de la Riviera Maya. We recently returned from the Riviera Maya mission trip. Y en uno de los lugares que estuvimos, un hombre vino a ver a nuestro equipo médico y lo atendió el doctor Aarón. And in one of the locations of our ministry, a man came to see our medical team, and Dr. Aaron Trimble treated him. Luego de algunos minutos salió él y me dijo, Pastor Mauricio, puede hablar con esta persona. Él no tiene nada físico, pero tiene mucha carga emocional. After a few minutes, he stepped away from the patient and said to me, Pastor Mauricio, can you talk with this person? He has nothing physically causing him pain. But he has deep emotional burdens. Conversé con él y después de esa conversación le dije que la única persona que podía ayudarle a su tristeza, a su dolor, era Jesús. I talked with him and after our conversation, I told him that the only person that could help him with his sadness and pain was Jesus. Y le presenté a Jesús como salvador personal y él recibió a Jesús. I introduced him to Jesus as his personal savior and he received him. Oré con él y cuando terminamos le dije a este hombre, le puedo dar un abrazo. I pray with him and when we finished I asked him, could I give you a hug? Y él me dijo que sí. And y este said, hombre comenzó a llorar y me dijo, me siento mejor. And he said yes and then he started to cry and he told me, I feel better. ¿Por qué menciono Este testimonio. Why do I mention this testimony? Porque la vida 
de un nuevo creyente nace como discípulo a través de la oración del arrepentimiento en Dios. Because the life of a new believer and these new disciples are born again with the prayer of repentance towards God. Y desde ese momento esa persona tiene un acceso directo con el Padre en poder comunicarse con Dios directamente. And from that moment on, that person has direct access to the Father and can communicate directly with Him. Es decir que cuando alguien confiesa a Jesús como Salvador personal, that is to say that when someone confesses Jesus as their personal savior, está siendo reconciliado con el Padre y él en ese instante lo comienza a reconocer como su hijo. They are reconciled with the Father and he recognizes them as his child. Muchas personas dicen que todos somos hijos de Dios. Many people say that we are all children of God. Pero esto no es lo que nos dice la Biblia. But this is not what the Bible tells us. Pues la palabra de Dios nos enseña que nosotros los seres humanos somos criaturas de Dios. Because the word of God teaches us that we human beings are God's creatures. Y hasta que recibimos a Jesús como nuestro salvador personal, recibimos el derecho de ser llamados hijos de Dios. That is until we receive Jesus as our savior when we receive the right to be children of God, to be part of his family. Dice Juan 1:12 John 1:12 tells us Ponga atención, mas a todos los que le recibieron, a los que creen en su nombre, les dio el derecho, les dio la potestad de ser llamados hijos de Dios. Pay close attention to this. Yet to all who received him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. Amen. Dios es el creador de todos los hombres, pero no es padre de todas las personas. God is the creator of all men, but he is not the father of all. Solo los que han aceptado a Jesucristo como su salvador personal gozan de ese elevado privilegio. Only those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord are the ones who receive the highest privilege. La perspectiva moderna de que todos los hombres son hijos de Dios no coincide con lo que expresa las Escrituras. The modern perspective that we are all children of God does not coincide with what is expressed in the Scriptures. Lo que sí es cierto es que todos somos creación de Dios. What is true is that we are all God's creation. Humanamente hablando, sí podemos decir que todos somos hijos de Adán. Humanly speaking, we can say that we are all children of Adam. Amen. Amen. Pero recibimos el derecho, el poder, el privilegio, la autoridad de ser hijos de Dios únicamente por medio de Jesucristo. But we receive the right, the power, the privilege, the authority to be children of God only through Jesus. Cuando le recibimos como Salvador personal. When we received him as our personal Savior. Al abrir nuestro corazón y pedir perdón por nuestros pecados, nos convertimos automáticamente en hijos de Dios. By opening our hearts and asking forgiveness for our sins, we automatically become God's children. No hay otro camino, no hay otra forma, otra manera de poder ser hijo de Dios. There is no other route, no other way to become children of God. No es lo que yo pienso, no es lo que yo digo, no es lo que yo siento. It is not what I think, it is not what I say, it is not what I feel. Hechos 4.12 dice, en ningún otro hay salvación porque no hay otro nombre bajo el cielo dado a los hombres en que podamos ser salvos. Take a look at what Acts 4.12 says. Salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Cuando nos arrepentimos de nuestro pecado y aceptamos por la fe a Jesús, when we repent of our sin and accept Jesus by faith, en ese breve instante se da lo que yo le llamo una santa reconciliación. In that instant, that is what I call a holy reconciliation. La reconciliación es importante porque sin ella 
hay una enemistad. This reconciliation is important because without it, there is enmity. Sin la reconciliación, no hay relación. Lo que existe es una separación de comunicación entre el hombre para con Dios. Without reconciliation, there is no relationship. What exists instead is a separation of communication between men and God. La reconciliación implica necesariamente un cambio. Reconciliation with God naturally implies a change. Sin reconciliación con Dios no hay paz, no hay perdón, no hay una relación personal con Él y no podemos llamarle a Él Padre. Without reconciliation with God, there's no peace, no forgiveness, no personal relationship in Him and we cannot go to Him as our Father. Y lo más importante... Sin reconciliación no hay comunicación, es decir, no existe una buena oración. And most importantly, without reconciliation, there's no communication. In other words, there's no good prayer. Porque de una forma sencilla, orar simplemente es conversar con Dios. A straightforward understanding is that to pray is simply to converse with God. Ahora bien. Orar no es evidencia de ser cristiano. But pay attention to this. Praying is not an evidence of being a Christian. Oran los musulmanes, oran los budistas, oran los mormones, oraban los fariseos. Muslims pray, Buddhists pray, Mormons pray, the Pharisees prayed. Aunque Jesús dijo que oraban para sí mismo y para impresionar a los hombres, pero no para Dios. Even Jesus said that they pray for themselves and not to, imp and to impress men, but not for God. ¿No te parece interesante que las primeras palabras de esta enseñanza fueron Padre Nuestro? Don't you find it interesting that the first words of this teaching on prayer are our Father? Jesús quería marcar una diferencia en la manera en que nos acercamos a Dios. Jesus marked a clear difference in the way we approach God. No de una manera religiosa, sino de una forma personal. Not in a way of religiosity, but in a personal way. El Padre Nuestro es la oración más hermosa que Jesús enseñó. The Lord's Prayer is the most beautiful prayer that Jesus taught. Cuando los discípulos le preguntaron cómo debemos orar. When the disciples asked him, how should we pray? Y esa pregunta se da por la razón que Jesús en el Sermón del Monte, Él habló de cómo no debemos orar. And that same question is the reason that Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount talked about how we should not pray. La oración del Padre Nuestro es probablemente la oración más conocida y repetida por nosotros los cristianos. The Lord's Prayer is probably the most known and repeated prayer among Christians. Aunque cuando se estudian las oraciones de Jesús, se encuentran aproximadamente como diez, el Padre Nuestro no figura dentro de las oraciones de Jesús. When you study the prayers of Jesus, you will find about ten, but the Lord's Prayer does not appear among them. Porque esta... Fue una enseñanza en respuesta a la petición de sus discípulos y este fue un modelo que Jesús dio. Because this was a teaching in response at the request of the disciples. This was the model that Jesus gave. Pero al mirar este modelo de oración, vemos que la oración que agrada a Dios es una oración sencilla y una oración sincera. As we look at this model of prayer, we see that prayer pleases God. The, the prayer that pleases God is a simple and a sincere one. Debe salir de lo profundo del corazón y expresar lo que inquieta nuestro ser. It must come from the bottom of our hearts and express what troubles are being. Al orar debemos reconocer el poder, la grandeza de Dios y también la necesidad que tenemos en Él de que intervenga en nuestras vidas. In prayer, praying, we must recognize the power, the greatness of God, and also the need we have for Him to intervene in our lives. La oración del Padre Nuestro comienza reconociendo que hablamos con un Dios como nuestro Padre. 
the Lord's Prayer begins recognizing that we speak with God as our Father. Somos parte de su gran familia. We are part of his great family. Como hijos podemos hablar directamente con él sin necesidad de intermediarios. As his children, we can speak directly to him without the need for anything in between us. Jesús se anticipa a decir a sus discípulos en primer lugar cómo no deberían orar. Jesus began by instructing his disciples first how they should not pray. Jesús dijo, y cuando ores, no seas como los hipócritas, porque ellos aman el orar en pie en las sinagogas y en las esquinas de las calles para ser visto por los hombres. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Eso quiere decir que en el tiempo de Jesús, las personas oraban. That is to say that in Jesus' time, people prayed. Pero lo que Jesús pudo ver fue que la oración que muchos de ellos hacían eran oraciones hipócritas, eran oraciones falsas. But what Jesus could see was that the prayers many prayed were hypocritical prayers, false prayers. Oraban, pero Dios no estaba presente en sus oraciones. They prayed, but God was not present in their prayers. En las escrituras encontramos una parábola de un hombre que oró hipócritamente. In the scriptures, we find a parable of a man who prayed hypocritically. Vea lo que dice Lucas capítulo 18. Let's take a look at what Luke says in chapter 18. Dice la Biblia, dos hombres subieron al templo a orar, uno era fariseo y el otro era publicano. The Bible says, two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Es como decir, estaba orando un hombre bueno y estaba orando un hombre malo. In other words, one was seen in society as a good person and the other one as a bad person. El fariseo, dice el versículo 11, puesto en pie, oraba consigo mismo de esta manera. Dios, te doy gracias porque soy no soy como los otros hombres, ladrones, injustos, adúlteros, ni aún como este publicano. And in verse 11, we see, the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Ayuno dos veces a la semana, doy el diezmo de todo lo que gano. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. Pero ponga atención cuál era la actitud del publicano. But pay attention, what was the attitude of the tax collector? Estando lejos, no quería ni aún alzar los ojos al cielo, sino que se golpeaba el pecho diciendo, Dios se propicio a mi pecador. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Pero mira lo que dijo Jesús. Take a look at what Jesus said. O digo que este descendió a su casa justificado antes que el otro, porque cualquiera que se enaltece será humillado, y el que se humilla será enaltecido. I tell you that this man, rather than the only one, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humble, and all those who humble themselves will be exalted. El fariseo que se creía bueno, oró mal. The Pharisee, who thought he was above reproach, prayed badly. Más bien, ni siquiera oró, sino que presentó a Dios la factura de todos sus méritos personales. Rather, he did not actually pray but presented to God the account for his accomplishments. Y el publicano que se veía malo porque a lo mejor así era, oro bien. But the tax collector whose society looked down prayed well. Reconociendo su condición de pecador, expuso su deseo de ser perdonado. He recognized his sinful condition. He expressed his desire for forgiveness. Dios escuchó la oración del publicano y marcó el principio de una nueva vida. God heard the prayer of the tax collector and marked the beginning of a new life. Mientras que el fariseo salió del templo más pecador por su orgullo, 
pues oró con los labios, pero no oró con su corazón. While the Pharisee left the temple more sinful than when he had entered because of his pride, for the prayer, for he prayed with his lips, but not with his heart. Realmente, amados queridos, la hipocresía de la oración consiste en decir cosas que no hacemos. In reality, my beloved, there is hypocrisy in prayer when we say things we do not do. Amados, la oración es una intimidad personal de conexión con el Padre. My beloved, prayer is an intimate personal connection with the Father. Es cierto, podemos orar colectivamente, pero en sí está diseñada para hacerla de una forma personal. It is true, we can pray collectively, but prayer itself is designed to be done in a personal way. La oración consiste en ser transformados por la relación para con Dios. Prayer consists in being transformed by a relationship with God. Logrando con esto que el corazón de Dios baje al millo. Thus bringing God's heart into mine. La oración no consiste principalmente en conseguir lo que yo quiero. Prayer is not primarily about getting what we want. La oración no es un medio solo para pedir, para demandar, sino más bien es para tener comunión para con Dios. Prayer is not just a means to ask and to demand, but to have a communion with God. Entonces, la pregunta es, ¿cómo orar? So the question is, how do we pray? Pareciese que la pregunta que hizo uno de sus discípulos resuena en el día de hoy. Señor, enséñanos a orar. It seems that the question asked by his disciples still resonates today. Lord, teach us to pray. Jesús respondiendo a esa pregunta le dijo, vosotros pues oraréis así. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos. Jesus answered this question and said to them, this is the way you should pray. Our Father in heaven. Lo primero que veo en este inicio de oración que Jesús dio a sus discípulos es la paternidad de Dios. The first thing I see in this beginning prayer that Jesus gave to his disciple is the fatherhood of God. En el Antiguo Testamento encontramos muchos pasajes hermosos que reflejan la paternidad de Dios como un buen padre. In the Old Testament, we find many beautiful passages that reflect the fatherhood of God as a good father. Lo encontramos como un padre que constantemente protegía a sus hijos, un padre que constantemente instruía a sus hijos, y lo encontramos como un padre realmente totalmente amoroso. We find him to be a father who constantly protected his children, a father who constantly instructed us, and we find him to be a loving father. Vea lo que dice Isaías 63, 6, pero tú eres nuestro padre. Mira, si bien Abraham nos ignora e Israel no nos conoce, tú, oh Jehová, eres nuestro padre, nuestro redentor perpetuo, es tu nombre. Gloria Let's a Dios. take a look at what Isaiah 63, 16 says. But you are our father, though Abraham does not know us, or Israel acknowledge us. You, Lord, are our father, our redeemer, from old is your name. Ya para los tiempos de Jesús, muchos de los judíos habían olvidado que Dios era para ellos un padre. By the time of Jesus, Many of the Jewish people had already forgotten that God was a father to them. Por eso el amor paternal y la figura de un padre celestial fue pieza clave en las enseñanzas de nuestro Señor Jesús. This is why the paternal love and figure of a heavenly father was a key piece in Jesus' teaching. El pueblo había perdido esta imagen y Jesús la vino a revelar, aunque por supuesto esto dejó a muchos asombrados. The people had lost this image of God, and Jesus came to reveal it. And of course, this was unsettling to many. Por eso cuando vamos a, a Juan 5, 8, mira lo que dice. This is why when we go to John 5.18, this is what the Bible tells us. Por esto los judíos aún más procuraban matarle porque no solo quebrantaba el día de reposo, sino que también decía que Dios era su propio padre, haciéndolo igual a Dios. 
For this is the reason they all tried to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God as his own father, making himself equal to God. Como decíamos anteriormente, en nuestros tiempos es común escuchar a personas que aseguran que todos somos hijos de Dios. As mentioned earlier, in our modern time, it is common to hear people say that we are all children of God. Lo que técnicamente hace a un Dios un Padre universal. Which technically then makes God a universal Father. Pero esta mañana me gustaría que nos quede muy claro que ser creados por Dios, hacer hijos de Dios, hay una gran diferencia. But this morning, I would like to make it clear that there is a huge difference between being created by God to being children of God. Amen. Amen. La Biblia nos enseña que la paternidad de Dios Padre es solamente para aquellos que le han recibido como Salvador personal. The Bible teaches us that the relationship with God the Father is only to those who received him as their personal savior. Romanos 8, 14, 15 dice, porque todos los que son guiados por el Espíritu de Dios, estos son hijos de Dios. Romans 8, 14 says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Amen. Amen. Pues no habéis recibido el espíritu de esclavitud para estar otra vez en temor, sino que habéis recibido el espíritu de adopción por el cual clamamos Abba Padre. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you, leave, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba Father. Se dice que esta expresión, Abba Padre, es una mejor traducción, sería Padre mío querido. It is said that this expression of Abba Father in a more accurate translation would be, my dear father. Otros dicen que sería papito. Others say that it would be daddy. Amen. Qué lindo, ¿no? Amen. What a beautiful. Pero lo que sí es seguro es que Abba Padre refleja la relación entre padre e hijo que está basada en la confianza, el respeto, el cuidado, la responsabilidad y el amor. It's a beautiful way of seeing it. But what is certain is that Abba Father reflects the father-son relationship that is based on trust, respect, care, responsibility and love. La paternidad del padre hoy con aquellos que le han recibido como salvador personal es que somos hijos de él y no somos huérfanos. God's fatherhood today with those who have received him as their personal savior means that we are not orphan children. Tenemos una herencia eterna, tenemos derecho de libertad en Cristo Jesús. We have an eternal inheritance. We have the rights of freedom in him. Tenemos privilegios, somos su especial tesoro, pero también tenemos responsabilidades de guardar sus mandamientos. We have privileges. We are his special treasure, but we also have responsibility to keep his commitments. La expresión Padre Nuestro nos recuerda que si sí podemos acercarnos a Dios como un hijo se acerca a su Padre. The expression Our Father reminds us, reminds us that we can approach God as a child approaches their father. Entendiendo que no todos los padres terrenales han sido los mejores. We understand that not our earthly fathers have been the best fathers. Probablemente no han provisto o cuidado de la mejor manera o no han dado los mejores ejemplos. They probably have not provided or care in the best way or have set the best examples. Pero sí podemos tener la certeza que sí podemos ver a Dios como un buen padre, un padre amoroso, un padre que cuida muy bien de sus hijos. But we have certainty that we can see God as our father. He is the one that instructs us. He is the one that loves us. He is the one that takes care of his children. Que nos instruye queriendo siempre lo mejor para nosotros. Instructing us and always wanting the best for us. Él es nuestro papi y anhelamos estar siempre con él. He is our longed for daddy to whom we can go with our hurts. 
Podemos ir con nuestras heridas, podemos ir con nuestros golpes. We can go to him with our bruises, we can go to him with our hurts. Podemos presentarles todas nuestras frustraciones, podemos ir con todo nuestro dolor. We can present to him our frustration, our pain. Podemos traer tristeza y muchas confusiones posiblemente. We can bring to him our sorrows and potentially many confusions. Y lo maravilloso de todo eso es And the best part about all of this is que él está para sanar, para vendar nuestras heridas y darnos palabras de aliento y consuelo. Is that he is here to heal, to bind up our wounds and to give us words of encouragement and comfort. Por eso decimos realmente, Padre celestial. Truly, this is why we say our heavenly Father. Porque es nuestro amparo y fortaleza, nuestro pronto auxilio en medio de cualquier tribulación. Because he is our prompt refuge, our strength, our ever-present help in the midst of any trouble. Es un padre que verdaderamente conoce a cada uno de sus hijos. He is a father who truly knows each of his children. Él te conoce por nombre. He knows you by name. Si hay alguien que te ama, ese es nuestro Padre Celestial. If there is someone that loves us, that is our Heavenly Father. Y Él está disponible para cualquiera uno de nosotros todos los días de nuestra vida. And He is available to every single one of us in every day of our lives. De la misma forma en como un niño se acerca a su Padre, de esa forma necesitamos acercarnos a nuestro Padre Celestial. Just as a child goes to his earthly father, We need to go to our heavenly Father. Sabes por qué? Porque nuestro Padre celestial siempre está dispuesto a guiarnos, a saciarnos y a protegernos. And you know why? That is because our heavenly Father is always there to help us, to guide us, to protect us. Amen. Qué privilegio tan grande hemos recibido por medio de la relación personal que hoy tenemos con Jesucristo. What a great privilege we have received through this personal relationship that we have with his son Jesus Christ. Amen. Qué lindo. Amen. Yo soy padre de cinco hijos a los cuales amo, pero no me atrevería a decir que los conozco completamente porque hay cosas que me sorprenden de ellos. I am the father of five children whom I love. But I would not dare to say that I know them completely because there are things that amaze me about them. Pero con nuestro Padre Celestial no hay asombro porque Él nos conoce sinceramente, amados queridos. But with our Heavenly Father, there is no amazement, there is no surprise because my beloved, He knows us sincerely. Por eso me, me llena de mucho gozo cuando voy a Hebreos capítulo 10, 16 y Él nos hace una invitación. And that is why it fills me with great joy when I go to Hebrews 4.16 when He makes us this invitation. Acerquémonos pues confiadamente al trono de la gracia para alcanzar misericordia y hallar gracia para el oportuno socorro. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Me voy a acercar con confianza y voy a derramar mi corazón delante de su presencia. I will draw near with confidence and pour out my heart before his presence. Me voy a acercar a mi padre en todo momento de mi vida. I will draw near to my father at all times of my life. Voy a conversar con él en alabanza y adoración porque él es lo mejor que me ha pasado en mi vida. I will talk with him in praise and adoration for he is the best thing that has happened in my life. Voy a traer mi necesidad porque realmente él conoce todo lo que yo necesito. I will bring my needs to him because he truly knows what I need. Voy a esperar pacientemente mi Padre Celestial. I will wait patiently on my Heavenly Father. Voy a conversar con él confiando que mi socorro viene de él. I will converse with him trusting that my help is in him. Esa es la confianza que tengo con él. 
That is the confidence that I have with him. En mi oración le voy a decir que le amo y así como yo cuento con él para cualquier necesidad. In my prayer, I will tell him that I love him and just as I count on him with every one of my needs. Deseo que mi padre sepa que él puede contar conmigo para hacer su voluntad. I want my father to know that he can count on me to make his will come true. Amado querido, Dios está a la distancia de una oración. My beloved, our dear God is only as far away as a prayer. Amen. Amen. El Señor Dios Todopoderoso escucha las oraciones de sus hijos. The Lord God Almighty hears the prayers of his children. Y nos manda a orar y nos promete escuchar cuando lo hacemos. And he commands us to pray and he promises to listen when we do. Dice el Salmo 18, 16. In Psalms 18, 6. En mi angustia invoqué a Jehová y clamé a mi Dios. Mira qué maravilloso. Él oyó mi voz desde su templo y mi clamor llegó delante de él a sus oídos. Take a look at this beautiful passage. In my distress I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice. My cry, my cry name before him into his ears. Amen. That is not so beautiful. La expresión Padre Nuestro implica que Dios está íntimamente cerca de cada uno de nosotros. The expression of our Father means that God is surrounding each one of us. Como el Padre se compadece, dice Salmo 103, 13, 14. Como el Padre se compadece de los hijos, se compadece Jehová el Eterno. Porque Él conoce nuestra condición, se acuerda que somos polvo. Take a look at this other beautiful passage in Psalms 103. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Amen. Amen. Esta porción termina con Padre Nuestro que estás en los cielos. Today's message began and ends with our Father in heaven. No nos limitemos a los cielos azules que están al alcance de nuestra vista. Let us not limit ourselves to the blue skies that are within our reach of sight. Nuestro Padre Celestial es el creador del universo. Él, él es el todopoderoso que tiene control de todo cuanto existe. Our Heavenly Father is the creator of the universe. He is the all-powerful one who has control of all that exists. El hecho que las Escrituras nos enseñen que la tierra es el estrado de sus pies. The fact that the scripture teaches us that the earth is the footstool of his feet. Me hace ver la grandeza, el dominio, la autoridad que realmente nuestras vidas están en las manos de un Padre todopoderoso. Makes me see his grandeur, dominion, and authority, and that our lives are truly in the hands of an all-powerful Father. Amen. Amen. Deseo terminar con esto. I would like to end with this. ¿Qué privilegio tenemos de ser llamados hijos de Dios? What a privilege we have to be called children of God. Amen. Amen. ¿Qué privilegio? ¿Qué privilegio? Great privilege. Él es nuestro Padre lleno de toda bondad. God is our Father, the Father of all goodness. Nos cuida, nos protege. Nos instruye y nos da este hermoso privilegio que hoy tenemos de ser hijo de él. He takes care of us, he protects us, instructs us, and gives us this beautiful privilege that we have today to be his children. Pero deseo que guardes en tu corazón que solo somos hijos cuando recibimos a Jesús como Salvador personal. But I want you to keep in your heart that we only become his children when we receive Jesus as our personal savior. Así que si nunca has confesado a Jesús como salvador personal o no tienes la seguridad de ser hijo de él, este es el día que tú puedes venir a él. So if you have never confessed Jesus as your personal savior or are not sure that you're his child, make this today to come to Jesus. La paternidad del Padre se amplía a través de Jesús. Él nos reveló ampliamente el amor del Padre. God's fatherhood is expanded through Jesus Christ who revealed to us more fully the Father's love. Por eso la expresión, 
Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos. Hence the first expression and statement of the prayer to our Father who is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Dios me lo bendiga. Blessings to all of you. Amen. Our Father in heaven, each one of us is invited to come to the Father. It doesn't matter how broken you are, how troubled you are, how ugly your life is now. This is your Father, the one with perfect love and compassion. He's ready to call you his own once again this morning. He's ready to embrace you He's ready to empower you with his love and might. And he's ready to commission you to be the ambassadors of his presence. So would you come to the table, to the throne of his grace, where the relationship between you and the Father is restored through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Would you come to the table where the relationship between you and the rest of us is restored because of, what, because of what God has done for us in Christ. Would you come to the table where we confess it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Servers, please come forward. And everyone else, come and receive the love of Jesus, leading you to the life eternal, leading you to the Father. So gluten-free options are available in the back alcoves, and whenever you're ready, as we continue to worship, please come forward to any tables near you. Sin upon his shoulders, ashamed to hear my mocking voice, call out among the scoffers, it was my sin that held him there, until Dying breath. 
Let us praise our God for how great he is, for how wonderful he is, for how loving he is, our Father, the one who cares for you specifically, by name, exactly as you are, and cares just as much for us as a body, amen? The splendor of a king Unclothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness shrouds Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. Cuán grande, cuán grande es Dios. Cántale, cuán grande es Dios. Y todos lo verán. Cuán grande. If you are not uh, part of a small group here at Village, a DNA group as we call them, please walk across the lobby uh, in the Columbia rooms. We have several of our small group leaders there who are anxious to talk to you about why small groups are important for your personal group, uh, personal growth and the growth of our community here at Village. N.T. Wright in his small group, a small book on the Lord's Prayer reminds us that when Jesus is asking us to call God Father, he wants us to be ready for the new exodus. We are to be free at last. 
This is the Advent hope, the hope of the coming of the kingdom of God. Let us go now with that hope firmly in our sight, reminding ourselves that God is our Father and he has made us free. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.